All right, grace, mercy, peace to the saints who are watching this video. I want to start off by giving all praises to the Most High. In the name of the only begotten Son, the Spirit of life, the truth, that is Christ, the anointed Savior. All right, so let's get straight into this video. Today we're going to be talking about life and death. The true life and what really is death, right? So, um, in other words, the power of life and the power of death. The spirit of life and the spirit of death. So, to start off, this is John chapter 4 and verse 24. Get straight to it. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, right off um, the start, we know that God is a spirit. So, the reason why I'm pointing this out, because we're going to address what the spirit of death is. Right, so let's go to um, Second Corinthians, I believe, chapter 4. All right, and I'm gonna start at verse 2 actually. Well, I'll start at verse 1 so we can get the whole context. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hidden to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Right? So, the key point I want to get in this is in whom the God of this world. Now, we just read in John 4 and 24 that God is a spirit. So, in other words, in whom the spirit of this world had the blinded the minds of them which believe not. Now, what is the spirit of this world? Let's go to Romans chapter 8, right? Because it's two worlds. We have the spirit world, which is, um, okay, and then you have this current world, earth. You have the invisible, and then you have the uh, visible, right? Basically, you have two realms, the spirit realm, and then this realm that we're in, in a sense. So, let's go to Romans 8, and I'll start at verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ um, Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. What does he mean by walking after the Spirit? It means that you're allowing the Spirit of Christ, right? The Spirit of Christ lead you that's what he means by walking after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life there it is so the spirit of life in christ jesus had made me free from the law of sin of death and death so there's two laws right the law of sin of death and the law of the spirit of life so you have the power of the spirit of life and then you have this power of sin and death for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemn sin in the flesh what does he mean by God sent him in the likeness of sinful flesh let's keep reading that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Which means you don't let the flesh lead you. Why don't you let your flesh lead you? This fleshly body, this fleshly brain, this earthly legs, these earthly arms, these earthly hands, this, this, this whole earthly, this earthly heart, organs, all of this. Why don't you let it lead you? Why don't you let these thoughts lead you? Why? For they... 
Verse 5, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Now, what does 2 Corinthians 4 say? Let's go back. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds. Check this out. Blinded the minds. And then what did Romans 8 say? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit which means the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, the things of the Spirit. This is the key point. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So when he says spiritually minded, it means spiritually Christly minded, to be Christly minded. Why? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. It's not subject to the power of Christ. It's not subject, well, in other words, it's not subject to the spirit of Christ. I'll say that. It's not subject to the spirit of Christ. I can't say it's not subject to the power, but it's not subject to the spirit of Christ. Neither indeed can be. For then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Check that out. Here's the key. Here's another key point. But ye are not dead, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. That's why I said earlier to be spiritually minded is another way of saying to be righteous minded is life and peace. But to be fleshly minded is death. And we know that the spirit of this world is the spirit of the flesh, which is what? Death. Why is that a key point? So the power of death, the spirit of death, is the God of this world who has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Which is who? Now let's go to Hebrews 2. I know for some people this is like, well, I already knew this, but if you're still watching this at this point, we have we we're gonna get into a lot. Now this is Hebrews 2, and I'm gonna start at verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, blood. Like we all have to partake of this fleshly body, this earthly body, right? We all have to. He also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death. So what? Through the spirit of death. He might destroy him that had the power of death. Whoa. 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 He took part of this flesh and blood. And remember we just read in Romans 8 and 2 Corinthians 4. That this body. And his mind is blinded by Satan, right? It's subject to Satan. He even is found in his uh, words. That is the devil. So the devil, the devil has the power of death. And deliver them who through fear of death were all lifetime subject. Check that out. Subject to bondage so right this body this flesh and blood this this mortal body the whole body is subject to bondage because it's subject to the power of death which is the god of this world the spirit of this world the power of this world which is the devil but now crisis came now our souls can follow after the spirit of life, which is Christ. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behoved him to, made, to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Because why? This carnal body is constantly 
trying to tempt you to do evil. Why is this carnal body? Because it's under the power of death. That is the devil. The devil is the spirit of death. Right? And what powers do the devil have? What are the works of the devil? Before I even go there, uh, matter of fact, let's just get to it. Galatians 5. Let's talk about it. Verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, which means what? Walk in righteousness, walk in Christ. Follow him. Your soul should follow him. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, which means what? What's the lust of the flesh? Let's read. For the, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, which means death lusteth against life. And the spirit against the flesh. Oh, they're, they're constantly battling each other. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Which means you don't you can't do the things that you really want to do, which is follow after righteousness. Um, for a lot of people, if you have the Holy Spirit, but if you be led by the Spirit, but if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law, which means you're not under the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are manifest are manifest. These <laughs> these are the words of the flesh. Works is just another way of saying words. The actions, the deeds of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery. Check this out. Fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. These are all. This is what the world would say. Satan and his angels. Which just means Satan and his powers. These are the powers of death. These are the devils that's constantly working in the flesh. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath. So you have wicked, all of this is wicked. It's evil, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I also have told you, have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm. So those are uh, Satan and his death spirits. His death words. His death gifts. Because you can call these the gifts because the works. Right? They're the works. They're also the gifts of the flesh. They're evil gifts. And they lead what? To death. Romans 8 said to be carnally minded is death right but the fruit of the spirit is love what spirit is it talking about spirit of god spirit of christ the spirit of life is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law there's no death there's no flesh and they that are christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. You crucified the devil. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one uh, one another. Now let's go to Ephesians two. So now you know what the power of death is and its works. Or it's devils, it's followers. Satan as a whole is death. Ephesians 2. And you have be quickened, which means made alive. And we know what made alive mean. Which means you are now in the spirit of life when you're in Christ. Which means the spirit of righteousness. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. When in former times you were in the spirit of death. You were in Satan. You were in the devil. Wherein, time passed, you walked according to the course of this world. I just told you, according to the prince of the power of the air. Now, another word for spirit is air or breath. That's why he said the spirit that now worketh the children of disobedience. The 
children that the spirit that now worketh, worketh and the children of disobedience is Satan. Because he constantly is pricking at you in the flesh. But Christ quickens you because he destroyed the works of the devil. And you are in him. Verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation and times past in the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires. Look, these are the sins. Covenants. Desire is another word for covenants. When you strongly want something. The flesh, this carnal mortal body, constantly wants something. Of the flesh and of the mind, your whole body and mind just constantly wants something. Whether it's that new car or whatever it is in this earth. And you can be given over to it. Right? You can be given. Which means that thought, that demon is ruling over you. That desire is your king. It's okay to want something, but when it's your desire... You will do anything to get it. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So if you're a child of the devil, you're a child of wrath. And child just means you're a follower. You're a follower of wrath. You're following the lust of the flesh. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins because we were in Satan, the works of the flesh are sins. Hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. Why are you saved with grace? Let's keep going. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. Now, that's just another way of saying high spiritual places. In Christ, Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace, you're saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. That's why grace saves you, because it's the gift of God. I told you earlier that um, Satan and his his sins that we read in Galatians 5 were also his gifts, which are wicked and leads to death. That's why he said, not of works, lest any man should boast, not of works of the flesh, because anybody can boast. Any mortal man can boast. <laughs> for we are not, we, I mean, I'm sorry, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So check that out. So this because he said not of works doesn't mean that he's talking about works in general. He means just the works of the flesh. Because he said that we're created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We're about to read what the good works are. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore. Matter of fact, I'm, uh, I'll stop there with that. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. Let's find out what some of the good works Christ and his angels are. You got a devil and his angel and his works and his actions and his deed and his powers. But let's find out what Christ and his gifts are. Verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Check this out. Spiritual powers. Spiritual angels. Righteous angels, rather. Let's get to it. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as ye were led. So, if, I mean, you're, you're a child of the flesh when you're carried away to dumb idols. You're a follower. means you're a follower of the works of Satan. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, which is Christ, calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, ghost is just another word for spirit. Now, check this out. Now, there are diversities of gifts. There are different angels. There are different powers that's working through one power. But it's the same spirit. That's why I said it's different powers, but it's, it's, it's working through that one power. Different characteristics, different deeds, different actions, but it's the same spirit. 
there are diversities or there are differences in administrations. But the same Lord, it's the same ruler, it's the same king that they're following. And there are diversities of operations. But it is the same God who is worketh all in all. It's the same power that's working in all of these other angels or spirits or gifts that we'll call in this context. Or words. Because that's what he's ultimately saying. Let's get to it. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. But the same spirit, it's the same Holy Spirit. It's the same, it's the same thing. It's the same God. What he says, same God. To another, faith by the same spirit. Same God. To another, the gifts of healing by the same God. To another, the works of mir working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. For all these work it. That one and self same spirit. Divide, dividing to every man severally as he will. Check this out. For as the body is one, it hath many members. And all members of that one body, you have a head, shoulder, knees, and toes, tongue, eyeballs, ears. But it's all your body. You only have one body. But it's all part of your body. That's all he's saying. Being many are one body. So also is Christ. That's what Christ is. That's what the spirit is. It's only one. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, according to the flesh. But not according to the spirit. Whether we be bond or free. And have been all made to drink into one spirit. Which means to be partake. Baptized in. To partake into one spirit. Right? One spirit. One God. So these are the gifts and the angels. The works of the most high. The works of Christ. Of the most high in Christ. Which is what? The spirit of life. Let's go to First uh, First John. I had another point, but I'm going to hold on it. Let's go to First John 1. That which we've heard from, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled, of the word of life. You got the word of death, which is Satan. You got the word of life, which is Christ. For the life was manifested. Who was manifested? And we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. So this life was with the Father in the beginning. That's why it's one. It was with him at the beginning, before everything. And it was manifested unto us who have the Holy Spirit, right? That which, well, actually it came into the earth, period. So when he became a man, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father. Why? Because we just read in 1 Corinthians 12. And with his son which is the Holy Spirit of life, Jesus Christ, which was with the Father in the beginning. And the two are one. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be filled. Right? This then is the message which we have heard of him and declaring to you that God is light. God is righteous. God is the true spirit of life. He's the true spirit He's the true spirit of light. And in him is no darkness at all. There's no wickedness in him. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So if we say we are walking with God, but we're following the works of death, there's no life in us. And we're liars. And we know who the father of lies is. Lies. Let's see who the father of lies is. John 8 and verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. 
he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The flesh that is subject to Satan is the father of lies. The spirit of death is the father of lies, in other words. The spirit of death is the father of lies, which is Satan, the devil. Who was a murderer? Satan is a murderer. Who who committed the first Satan? Who committed the first murder? Cain. We know that in Genesis. He I don't have to get into that. Genesis. Cain was a murderer. He was a child of the flesh. Let's go to Romans 8. And I think I'm gonna wrap this up. I could go into a lot more, but um we're going to wrap this up with this one. I believe the spirit calls upon me. Wrap it up. Let's go to Romans 8. Quick precept about this. Like I was just saying about Cain and Abel. Watch this. Verse 20. Where the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by the reason of him who hath subject the same in hope. Because the creature itself, who's the creature? The flesh. The carnal body, the mortal body, also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Who are the children of God? Let's go up. Verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Don't follow the works of the devil, Satan, the mortal body, the mortal thoughts. For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit, which is Christ, do mortify, which means discipline, the deeds of the body, you shall live. You have to deny the flesh. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Check that out. So if you're led by Christ, you are a son of God. Because why? You are partaking of his righteousness. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. So you're an adopted son of the Most High God. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, we're rulers. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be, we suffer with him that we be also glorified together. Take that out. Take that out. Very powerful stuff, right? And if you keep reading, if you take this understanding that the Spirit is given through me, right? Um then you can apply this to the rest of the Bible and you will understand it perfectly. You will not confuse with the law of death and the law of sin. You will not confuse any of those things. You got the spirit of life, the spirit of death. You have Satan, which is death. And you have Christ, which is life. You have righteousness and you have wickedness. Satan is wickedness, which is death. Christ is righteousness, which is life. Um, it's really not that hard. Um, to understand once you have the spirit but if you don't have it we uh, just pray that you receive it believe in Christ right believe in him believe in him um I don't know if I have anything any other precepts I have plenty to get we can get into it like we can really just keep going through the spirit first is first Thessalonians 5 right first Thessalonians 5. Verse 4, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light and the children of the day. Right? We are not of the night nor the darkness. So once you come into Christ, you're not of the, not the night or the darkness. You're children of the light. Right? You're children of God. You're like Romans 8 just said. You are now an adopted son of the Most High. That's just one way of putting it. That's just one way of the Most High explaining it to you. He also likens it to garments, right? Like what you put on like clothes, in other words. He also put uh, likens it to like a tree of life. He also likens it to like 
like compares it to all these different things, but it's only just saying one thing. Follow the spirit of life, believe in Christ, have faith in him, um, that this flesh is going to keep being wicked, but through his grace, you don't commit to that wickedness that this flesh is always trying to get you to commit to. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's just what it is, right? Check this out. This is why I said... Watch this. Watch this. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. And then I'm going to end it here. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. Paul said he's in captivity to righteousness. He's in captivity to Christ. Beseech you. That ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Because charity, you gotta have charity. And over to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We're all one body. We're all we all need each other. We're we're one. Wisdom and faith. It's all one Holy Spirit. It's one God. It's one body and one spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all. He's the supreme ruler. He's the supreme leader. And through all and in you all, the father is in you. Check that out. But uh, unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift or the work or the angel. Or the spirit of Christ. Check that out. Check that out. The Father is in you all. If Christ is in you, the Father is in you. If Christ is in you, the Father is in you. First Corinthians 3. Know ye not that the temple... That ye are the temple of God was what? And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. See, you can have earthly wisdom. I told you, that's a gift from Satan. That's the work of Satan, wisdom. That's how he deceived Eve, Eve in the beginning. He had wisdom, but it was wicked wisdom. The Most High has righteous wisdom. Christ has righteous wisdom. Let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. So there's wicked craftiness. You can, righteous, you can righteously be crafty, and you can be wickedly crafty. Right, just wanted to point out a few more examples. I keep saying I'm gonna wrap it up, but I just wanted to get some more examples before I do. First Corinthians 6, uh, verse 18 Flee fornication. What's fornication? That's work, that's a work of the devil. That's death. Fornication is death. Fornication is turning away from the spirit of life and following the spirit of death. Committing fornication is partaking of a work of the devil. Um, just partaking in it. Becoming, because as it is written, I'm not going to get too deep into that. Just flee fornication. It's when you have sex with someone someone who's not your significant other like your your husband or your wife right and you know they're they're just you're not married to them it's fornication every sin that a man doeth is without the body but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body what know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy spirit the holy ghost which is in you which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with the price. Everything comes with a price. Yes, yeah, freely given from the Most High, and it brings liberty and freedom. 
but you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And with all that being said, I want to give all praises to the Most High in the name of the only begotten Son, which is the spirit of life. That's the true name. You, know? uh, you can say it in Paleo Hebrew. You can say it in, you know, just understand what it is. It's life, right? Um, and it's truth, and it's faith, and it's grace, and it's wisdom, and it's charity. And it's all of those things that we're reading about, right? So follow after the king that is Christ, which is life, and turn away from this mortal body and put off your mortal thoughts, uh, put off your thoughts of death um, and of wickedness. And yeah, all praise to the most high.